action that our react uh, our, our 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 reasoning should support as whether it is good to do or not good to do for instance he finally intimates that lying is wrong and it is wrong not because of the consequences but it is by the nature uh, by the nature of lying itself uh, it makes it contradictory to humanity and human dignity at large you don't need to lie so when you lie you are basically doing the wrong thing according to Immanuel Kant so based on this moral philosophy Immanuel Kant identifies what he calls categorical imperative and this categorical imperative he subjects that into what he calls standard of rationality and one of those standard of rationality has to do with universalizability universalizability has to do with universal nature of what is right and what is wrong so if an act is right for one person it should necessarily be right for all in similar circumstances so he also identifies the second principle of respect for persons this respect for persons has to do with the fact that each and every individual should act in so way is in, in a means to respect humanity and treat everyone with a certain level of respect merely by the fact that the others are also born of humans so two categorical imperatives coming in the form of universalizability and then respect for persons now we'll move on to virtue ethics and virtues ethics discusses the uh, kind of you know happiness that people would uh, have uh, as a matter of meeting a certain moral excellence so uh, people tend to pursue happiness by doing good to people and that is in itself a certain principle that guides people who want good life a moral character at this point is emphasized instead of the right action you see previously we have uh, the discussion has actually focused on action 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 but at this point in virtue ethics we talk about the character of the individual so what sort of person should i be not what sort uh, what should i do or what action is right to do so at this point it is only acceptable that we write an action or wrong an action in terms of who the person who is involved in the action is in terms of virtues we describe virtues as specifically those acquired traits that every you know uh, one needs for a good life in fact regardless of the specific situation you find yourself so these are traits among humans that make them do the right thing regardless of the situation they find themselves given a typical example the auditor or the accountant whose daughter whose daughter has been admitted at the intensive care unit and needing all kinds of medicine for survival this accountant if regardless of this situation still will hold on to moral life the good life is that is expected of him and refuse to add zero zeros to that figure to generate about 100,000 you know uh, cities to go and support uh, her, her daughter in the intensive care unit so in terms of virtue the right thing to do is the right right character to follow it is obvious that in business people who are virtuous do virtuous business virtue ethics could be applied to business directly and it is obviously so because we believe that the virtues of good persons in in the world when they come into business they also pursue you know virtuous uh, businesses then we move on to Rawls egalitarian uh, egalitarianism uh, this particular theory egalitarianism 
has to do with fairness and justice ethics. The basic value of their argument is equality, fairness. So equal share in every distribution. So when we are taking decision, we should take the decision in such a way that will be fair to everybody. And so the basic idea is that good people should fare well and bad people should fare badly. It is obvious. Sometimes people challenge this fact that in the real world situation, you see good people faring badly and bad people faring uh, very well. But such is the world we find ourselves. According to Rawls' egalitarianism, I mean, good people should fare well and bad people should fare badly. They also argue on certain principles. These principles has to do with natural rights. And according to uh, the egalitarian principle, natural rights belong to everybody purely by virtue of uh, their being, you know, humans. And you see, so once you are born of man, you have a certain natural right. You remember in, uh, in the previous uh, lesson, we made reference to the Universal Declaration of uh, Human Rights and uh, right to, you know, uh, uh, various forms of, you know, freedoms and so on and so forth. So these natural rights belong to persons by virtue of the being, you know, human beings. According to Rawls, uh, this natural right has two major features or characteristics. They are characterized by universality and unconditionality. Universality here has got to do with the fact that it exists everywhere. It is universal in nature. When you go to Nigeria, this right exists. When you go to the United States, it is also existing. So it is for the universe. It's global. Unconditionality has to do with uh, the individual's natural right being given to him without any condition. It should not be conditioned on whether you are a man or a woman, male or female. It should not be conditioned on religion, ethnicity. It should not be conditioned on race and so on and so forth. So natural rights are usually rights that are given to people purely by virtue of their being uh, 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 human beings and not uh, subjected to any condition of race, religion, gender, and so on. On that basis, Aristotle identifies three kinds of justices. Distributive justice, compensatory justice, and retributive justice. Distributive justice has to do with when we are deciding to distribute any uh, burden or any benefit, we need to distribute it equally and fairly. In terms of compensatory justice, when we are deciding on you know, uh, any wrongdoing, those who might have suffered any, you know, wrong done them should be compensated appropriately. And when somebody does any wrong to anybody, the person who did that wrong should be punished uh, as explained in retributive justice. So Aristotle distinguished between distributive, compensatory, and retributive justice. You may care to know that in uh, our situation, uh, people do wrong and they are, you know, uh, allowed to go scot free. Uh, a teacher does the wrong thing and is transferred to another village. It, it, it is not retributive uh, enough. The egalitarian theory also identified two uh, major principles the principle of equal opportunity and the difference principle. In terms of the difference principle, uh, Rawls argued that, yes, we say everything should be equal, equality, and everything. But, but, but sometimes it is allowed that a certain unequal distribution uh, would exist, especially when, you know, it makes all of us better off. I am a teacher. You may be a banker. You may be a lawyer. But you see, we cannot all do the same job. So interdependency makes us all select different kinds of uh, uh, specialization, different kinds of work, so that we can coexist. I mean, I go to hospitals, and when I go, I usually meet a student I have taught before. 
And so unequal you know, distribution may be justified in our system, especially when it makes all of us better off. And then when it comes to the principle of equal opportunity, Rawls explained that career, for instance, should be open to all on the basis of talent, and that is all. You should be given the opportunity to be hired or to be appointed based on the talent that you have, based on your capacity, based on your, your, your competences and your qualification. We shouldn't be selective in you know, hiring, for instance. And that is why I usually advise my female friends that don't let them give you any position just because you are a woman. It means that beyond womanhood, you have nothing else to offer. The position must be given to you purely on the basis that you have the competence, you have the capacity, you have the qualification and talent to do the job. And that's what Raw sought to explain in this case. Then finally, we may want to touch on uh, the uh, entitlement theory. Entitlement theory by Nozick tried to explain that any form of, you know, uh, pattern in justices uh, should not be encouraged. He believes that such patterns in justices, such patterns that are identified in the uh, delivery of justice may end up you know, violating the liberties and rights and freedoms of other people. So you see, when we are delivering justice, the argument by Nozick is that if somebody steals, for instance, uh, a certain iPhone and another person steals the same similar iPhone, you may probably would want to give the same, you know, uh, punishment for all of them. The moment you vary the punishment, it means that you have patterned the distribution of justice. And so somebody may rise up one day, especially those who suffer the, you know, uh, distribution, the patterns, uh, to argue that you have violated my rights. So we should uphold the right to liberty, which is not, you know, distorted by any pattern of justice. Nozick identified some three principles when it comes to acquisition of property and distribution largely. The first principle is the principle of just transfer. So if you are owning anything, it should have been transferred to you through the just means. Or what we call the principle of original acquisition. You may want to buy the building yourself. You acquire the building originally through just means. Or if you are transferring it to another person, the acquisition would have been done through just what transfer. If you ignore any of these, then you are likely to have acquired or owned one property or the other through an unfair means or through an unjust means. And one day somebody may activate what we call the principle of ratification. The principle of ratification is necessary because Holdings can be unjustly appropriated by force or by fraud. So people will rise up, run after you, and take back what belongs to them, which has previously been appropriated through an unjust means. You remember when there is a change in government. The moment there is a change in government, you see people running after one government, former government appointee or the other, that they have appropriated themselves bungalows, land, uh, four-wheel drives, V8, and all those things. People who run after them are actually activating the principle of ratification and taking back all the holdings which has unjustly been appropriated by force or by fraud to former government uh, appointees. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where I will end the uh, lecture on ethical